Going into RSLA uh, remarketing lists for search ads, uh, you're also you're also pretty passionate in there. Can you give us a description of what those are to our listeners? Sure, RSLA it's uh, you know kind of relatively newish technology has been around for like maybe three years or so. Uh, it's not really used that much though. It, uh, it should be used more, but but it's it's kind of one of those powerful underused features. Uh, basically, all it says is um, you know rather than going after all the, the the people who are searching for the keywords that you're interested in, right. uh, it's, it's only going to target the people who search for the keywords you're interested in who recently visited your, 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 um, your site. Uh, and, and there's another technology called RLSA Similar Audiences, which mm-hmm. says like, the, you know, they're kind of a little, they're kind of shifty on how they, um, how they, they, they populate that audience, but it's, it's, it's kind of based on search history and browsing history of, of, of the people who are searching for this to, to expand the audience uh, to, to a, a you know, slightly bigger pool. And I think this is really important um, you know, because um, uh, with, with costs for clicks being you know, $5, $10 a click, right. uh, you, you, know, you, you can't really afford to, to be wrong. You know, like if you have a 2% conversion rate, you know, the, the, like the, the costs are ast- astronomical. Um, uh, but, but if you're going after kind of these people who've, who have brand affinity, who've heard of you, like recently, right. uh, uh, you know, what we found is that these people uh, are going to be like two to three times more likely to, to want to click on your ads and want to buy from you. Because like I was saying before, you know, people, um, you know, people don't, they, they tend to click on the things that they've heard of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, so it's kind of like a little hack, like say, say I gave you a hundred clicks. Okay. And, and uh, you had to figure out, you know, which ones to buy. Uh, you know, you could say, oh, I only want the ones with certain, you know, keyword phrases or a certain, you know, time of day or right. certain um, locations. But it turns out the most discriminating signal of, of like, you know, to, to determine whether or not this guy is going to convert or not is brand affinity. Uh, like, have they visited your site recently? And wow. so by using that, you can be very picky and just pick out like the top three clicks out of that hundred that are the, the most likely to, to uh, convert. Now, the, the benefit of RLSA is also the, the, the weakness of RLSA. So the, the benefit of RLSA is you're being really, really picky uh, because you're picking that those three guys who've heard of you and they're most likely to, to convert. Uh, the downside of this is that you're not really growing your market either. You know, oh, you're yeah, just, yeah. You're, you're kind of just you're pick, cherry picking the, the, the guys who, who were, were going to be um, you know, most likely to buy anyway. So, yeah. so what, I, what I advocate is, is kind of using RLSA in conjunction with some other uh, kind of lead uh, lead flow upstream, you know, uh, brand affinity uh, generation campaigns like radio ads, like so that'll you know millions of people hear this thing, and that'll cr- create searches that you can then search your marketing you know, to to go go after these mm-hmm. things, or, mm-hmm. or or social ads, or right. on Facebook, or or display ads, where you're going after like certain demographics or interests to to drive like a crap ton of, or or even content content marketing and SEO to, to to drive a ton of, of of clicks to your site, and then just you know. Uh, converting them on the cheap with RLSA. Any yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, <laughs> no, it's 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 a very cost efficient way, and it's really it's, you're capitalizing on that brand play. And we've seen some great conversion rates at a low cost uh, for the campaigns that we run in in that space. Uh, so, what are some of the basic keys that you should look for before diving in into setting up uh, RLSA? Well, uh, this it really requires that you have an, an audience to retarget to because, yeah. like, if if your site only has ten thousand visitors a month. Uh, you know, it's, it's you're kind of waiting for these eclipses where, like, the person who visited you, you know, also then searches for one of the keywords on your list. Right. That, you know, it doesn't happen like you know, you know, it's 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 uh, uh, not not as frequent as, as I'd like it to be. Uh, it, it's basically um, uh, so 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 you need to have like a an existing audience. So one thing I think that RLSA is really fantastic for is if you're doing SEO. Right. So like a lot of these SEO sites, they've got millions of, of, of visitors every month. Uh, you know, why not spend like, you know, a thousand dollars on, on, on paid search in a very smart way, only using RLSA just to, to, to capture, uh, on the demand that you've mm-hmm. created or, or organically. Do you see what I'm saying? No, I do. Uh, um, so, so it's more of like a, a these, for these larger w- websites that have, um, you know, larger uh, presences, because of because of how the remarketing uh, requires requires a lot of people to, to improve yep. your chances of, of, of being able to serve ads. Are there any uh, particular industries that should be doing this uh, as opposed to others? Um, the more competitive the industry, the, the the more critical this is because, like, you know, there's industries where its cost per click is like fifty, hundred, you know, two hundred dollars a click. 
you know, so uh, like insurance, finance, uh, you know, like like I was saying, you can't really afford to be wrong when you're paying that much for a click. So I'm saying right. like, well, just look, we'll, we'll buy, we're not going to buy all the clicks. We're just going to buy 5% of them. But the ones that the 5% of the clicks that we're, we're buying, we're being super picky because those are the guys who really want to buy from us the most. because they've, they've, they've heard of us before and have checked us out before and have the right demographics, you know, and interests in, in terms of like wanting to you know, buy our stuff. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Um, well, uh, can you explain just from a technical standpoint? And uh, there's a lot in inside of the RLSA that you can RS, RSLA that you can uh, RLA. I keep on tripping over that. Literally, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these people at Google, like they they got where do they come up with these names? But you know, like like R, RLSA, <laughs> like really, that's what you're, oh, you're going to call this thing? Oh my Why don't gosh. they just go back to naming them after animals or something? Please. <laughs> Uh, so so when you market call, that giraffe, you, you, you could also call it search remarketing. There you as go. Opposed, as opposed to display remarketing. You know? so. Excellent. Well, um, can you can you explain the differences between target and bid and bid only inside of inside of the RLSA? In uh, you know, uh, the way that I use it, um, I use a, a, a target and bid. Uh, so. Uh, it, it just boils down to why, why are we using RLSA in the first place? Okay. Um, now there's two theories. Um, one is that you could bid, you could bid differentially for the people who, who visited you recently. You right. follow? Like, so like, Oh, I'm going to bid three times more for this search, this keyword, if, if they they visited me recently. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they're they're three times more likely to convert. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I'm saying, uh, you know, I would use it a little differently. I would I would use target and bid. Uh, I would use RLSA to to uh, to buy those those uh, those clicks that have the strong brand affinity uh, and nothing else. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so like I'm, I'm I'm using it as kind of an exclusionary thing. Like I'm only um, uh, I'm only interested in the ones that are, are most likely. To convert and, and nothing else. Uh, I think, um, you know, Google doesn't, you know, for obvious reasons, they don't want people to not buy their, their keyword ads. Uh, you know, so they haven't really been promoting this kind of view of, of, of RLSA only. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's not that crazy. Uh, if, if you think about display advertising, I know, you know, like more than half of the advertisers that, that, that I work with are, are doing remarketing uh, for their display campaigns only. You know what I'm saying like really? like they don't they don't buy just like oh managed placement I want to have a, a an ad on a certain website or something like, like you know that, that could be too, too generic like a lot of people just deploy their limited budgets on on remarketing for display only and so on. like similarly I'm saying like if you're in a really competitive search vertical uh, consider going uh, RLSA only uh, search remarketing only uh, for your paid ads. Very cool, very cool. Now they they rolled this out uh, how long ago? About two, two, three years ago. Well, display was there a good deal uh, before that, but these uh, these uh, these lists, these these ads, and this technology have really uh, been in, inside of the uh, AdWords space for about three years. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, and it, it was in beta for maybe a year before. That. Right, 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 right. Very good, 